long and then we would get no, 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 continue continue no we're good all right go on, go on. Welcome, Pastor Ben and Pastor D. Adekubi. God Hello. Hello. Happy Mother's Day, Mama D. And you too. Thank you very much. God bless you. Yeah, I, I apologize, guys. I know we've lost uh, quite a few people off the line. We've been on for one hour, but that's okay. Um, God is going to bless this section. So <laughs> I hope you guys will hang on here and just uh, listen to our ministering pastor today. Uh, pastor D. Adekube and Pastor Ben Adekube has been a mother and a father to many, many, many of us for many, many, many years. And I would not talk too much. I know our time were, was uh, fast spent while we were praising there. I'll just let uh, her and her husband introduce themselves, the things that she is doing. Amazing work behind the scene. There's so many, many things that she does. Um, I would just let her tell us a little bit of it. And then uh, down the road, we're going to figure out how you can follow her, how you can connect with them. And, uh, you know, if you need prayers, you need uh, counseling, guidance, listening to podcasts, uh, everything. You want to be a partner with the work she's doing with women, with her husband, their charity, everything. So I'll let you speak, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless, God bless you all. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and women out there who are doing the phenomenal work. Uh, we thank God for your lives. Uh, my name is Pastor Dia Dikubi of Calgary World Harvest Christian Center. And my, my wonderful husband here is... Um, Pastor Ben Adikubi. And we pastor a uh, church here in Calgary. We're originally from London, England, and we've been in Calgary for um, since 2004. When we're not pastoring, um, we run, I run a women's ministry called All Women Ministry, and it's focused and the vision is um, raising up the Debras in our generations who are fully complete in Christ to take their places in the seven pillars of our society, which is the education, the media, the family, the arts and entertainment, the um, church, government and politics and yeah, and like yes and um yeah so that's what we're all about and we are so excited to be here on the uh, on this show thank you for having us thank you so much pastor ben i'm pretty sure a lot of people might want to hear from you too i know you wear many hats also just like your wife oh. <laughs> well i'm pastor ben i am <clears throat> together with my wife uh, pastor d we pastor a church called calgary world harvest mm -hmm. christian center uh, we've and um, God has called us as a Barnabas. Uh, we believe in uh, encouraging people uh, to be who God has called them to be. It doesn't matter what your background is. Uh, we do a lot of uh, counseling and mentoring mm -hmm. young men to be who God has called them to be. And um, one of the things I'm passionate about is men taking their place in society, especially in the place of honoring the queens of our society that is the women thank you so much sir a lot is always being said about the women and not much is done about the men so it's wonderful to see somebody wearing that heart taking the lead in that area we had a guest yesterday and we were talking about domestic violence and one of the uh, audience asked the question uh, men do get abused too Yes. You know, it wasn't a question. It was a straight up statement, you know, and uh, yes, that is true. But a lot of the times uh, people talk more about women. Is that because we're more women on earth? <laughs> <coughs> uh, no, not necessarily. Um, it's because men do not talk that much. If you look at your average grocery store and you look at the uh, magazine rack, you will see thousands of magazines that speak to women. Mm. Uh, less that speak to men and that's because by nature men do not talk we internalize rather than uh, uh, express emotions okay well maybe with time by the grace of god with people like you taking leads and maybe gathering more leaders in that area the voices of men will begin to be heard more because i know a lot of men suffer a lot of things too that are very very silent and what is more than building young men up so that they can be future better fathers better husbands and 
you know, maybe slowly that way domestic violence will be wiped away because if they're better men, there'll be better fathers, there'll be better husbands, there'll be better friends to the society, better managers and leaders in the society. And that is gonna help, yeah. So thank you so much. Our time was fast spent. So I am just going to leave you guys to share with us uh, based on the topic today, 21st century. And then we're going to take questions. I was hoping questions were gonna come based on the church, but a lot of the questions that came in is about women. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Let's, you know, let's we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah. You know, God is raising up women in this end time, um, in this end time. And women are, you know, they are playing vital roles in today's society, in, in ministry, in government, in, poly, in, uh, in every, uh, every areas of life. Mm -hmm. And it's great that, you know, that God uh, is beginning to position us as women strategically on the front line. Yeah. So it's not, you know, gone are the days whereby women are just stay at home moms, raising the children and doing nothing else. That is great. There are some women called to that. But also we are recognizing that there are some amazing women who are called to the front line of leadership in that, you know, in leading the in leading the nations, in leading the churches, in leading in, you know, in leading the communities, in leading in businesses. And it's, you know, it's so wonderful to see what God is doing through the lives of women today and you know being someone that is heavily involved in women's ministry I am grateful for the platforms that many women are rising up to both secular and in the church kudos to you know to all of those women taking their places and also kudos to the many men who are allowing you know who are allowing and supporting their wives and their sisters their daughters to rise up as deborahs in our generation deborahs in our nations we need them there is a place for women just as there were places for women in the bible there are places for women today on you know i am on the front line doing the work of the ministry we're not you know gone are the days whereby women are just um pushed back and to be seen and not heard today god is giving us a uh, you know megaphone he's given us platforms and i am grateful that many many amazing phenomenal women are, are, are taking advantage of that and are using it for the betterment of society and the kingdom of god Will it come a time where men will begin to become threatened because women have such power, Pastor Ben? No, I don't think so. I think one of the major things that we are missing in today's society is educating men and training men to be real men. <clears throat> mm. Mm. A real man to not to be threatened. A real man is a man who is secure in who he is. So uh, I think it's important that... Uh, uh, in this 21st century, we need to be real men. So uh, how a young man uh, grows up is dependent on what he sees. Wow, yes. The way his mother is treated, the way his sister is treated. You know, so wow, that wow. is very important that we begin to educate men to be men and teach men that they are queen. You see, uh, according to the Bible, God brought the woman as a gift to a man. Hmm. It was mm. as a gift. He didn't know. He didn't work for her. Otherwise, it would have been. He could have boasted about it. But he was asleep. He woke up and found this woman and says, "Wow, this is what I've been looking for." That's why it says, "Bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh." Wow. Thank you so much. So, guys, if you're just joining us, um, I know a lot of people left the the video. Uh, I mean, the broadcast earlier. Please reshare the broadcast so that more people can come in. I will be taking questions uh, online also, but the Pastor Ben and Pastor D, the questions are not in a sequence. They are just random questions. So, and the way we do it is if you're not, if you don't want to answer any of the questions, just say, I'm sorry, I'm not answering that. <laughs> or if you want to dig into the question before you respond to it, I have the numbers of the people that are sending questions so we can do it off camera. I would get the question emailed back to you. You respond to it and I forward it back to them. 
any which way that works. All right. So we'll go to the very first question. And I love this question. It's about women. They said, what is the main reason why God created women? And what is the place of a woman in the church in this uh, 21st century? Okay. Let me start and then you can finish up there. Okay. You know, I want to start with um, Genesis chapter one and then, and then my husband is going to come and just take it home for us. And um, Bible says in Genesis chapter one, verse 20, um, from verse 26 to 28, uh, uh, it says, then God says, let us make mankind in our own image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky over the livestock and all the wild animals. And if you go down it's in verse 27, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. And it goes into verse 28, it says, and God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, increase, fill the earth. When God created um, Adam and Eve, when God created mankind, he created them, you know, man and woman. And his purpose for man, for man and woman were to work together. Yeah, but to work together, the man was, you know, what you know, the man was doing the work by himself. And God says that it's not good that you know man should be alone to do all of this work alone. I'm going to create a helpmate, and a helpmate is somebody that comes and completes, uh, you know, somebody that comes and work beside, side by side to fulfill the vision that God gave. You know, and you know, role of men and women from the origin in the Bible is to work together to do the work of the ministry and you know and that and that and so when god when every time god calls a man it calls the entire family it doesn't just call somebody to just go and do them do, do their own thing and leaves the family behind it is a family that god always calls because from beginning that is how god designed it the man and the husband you know working together doing the work together fulfilling destiny together uh, and 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 it's only because of culture and sin that came into place and began to separate the roles and the tasks but that was not the intention from the beginning. Yeah, I <clears throat> I think uh, one of the major problems has been culture. Culturally, all over the world, women have been treated as second rate. Mm. But as mm -hmm. the origin, uh, the role of a woman, actually, as my wife said, is to be a helpmate. Now, let's take a step back for a moment. We all believe that God knows the beginning from the end, uh, the end from the beginning. Mm. Right. So God knew that if you leave it to a, man, to a man, you need somebody who will nurture a dream and motivate somebody to get to that place. And that's where the place of the woman came. Now, a woman, actually, if you look at Genesis 5, verse 2, you'll see that the word Adam, according in the King James Version, the word Adam mm. is actually male and female. Mm. Yeah, so, so it wasn't that God created woman as an inferior. There's another myth that people have that the woman was brought to help the man. No, God thought that it won't be right uh, for the task he has for them. It has to be a teamwork. Yeah, from creation, from, so, the, an from the animals, yeah. everything. So if you see the animals, they had male and female. And it wasn't just for procreation, you know, it, to be able to, uh, you know, uh, finish the task God has given man. Mm -hmm. He needed a helpmate, meaning he has to work as a team. So uh, the woman is not inferior. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the reason why the Bible says that we should love the women mm -hmm. uh, as Christ loved the church. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's mm -hmm. going to say in First Peter chapter 3, I think it's verse 7, mm -hmm. he says, treat the woman right so that your prayers will not be hindered. So wow. I guess she's very important. Otherwise, why would our prayers be hindered? That means God, if God can see a woman as important, then why why would he um, say he's not going to answer the man's prayer? Yeah. The other the last thing I wanted to add here is that God created every human being with a gift, with gifts and talents, and that included the woman. Now, mm -hmm. if you read uh, the the famous uh, passage in Pro Proverbs chapter uh, thirty one from verse ten to the end, he talked about the virtuous woman. Now, if you look at that virtuous woman, she was a businessman, a businesswoman. She was an entrepreneur. She was 
uh, a manager of systems. She was everything. Mm -hmm. so, so you can never look at the woman uh, as a second-rate citizen. Now, her place in the church, absolutely. I, personally, I believe a woman is, is she's gifted to be a businesswoman, gifted to be an interpreter. Mm -hmm. She's gifted to be a bishop. She's gifted yeah. to be a pastor. She, mm -hmm. And uh, there's one tradition in the church these days, uh, and I hope it changes, uh, if you're a woman, they can only call you an evangelist or they call you a prophetess, and that's rubbish. Mm -hmm. wow. Every woman is called, in, as long as a woman can be an engineer, she can be a mm -hmm. pastor, she can be a bishop, she mm -hmm. can be anything. Now, uh, but we'll, let me just stop there in case somebody has something else that we can... Can I just uh, add one thing quickly? Yes, please. You know, look at the story of the, um, the woman at the well, the woman, um, the Samaritan woman that um, Jesus met with. You know, the, you know, you, people think, okay, you know, Jesus went into Samaria, he needed to go through Samaria, and he sat at the well, and this woman came up, and he began to, you know, to have a conversation with her, and then eventually, you know, in this, you know, he said to her, go call your husband, and she said, you know, I don't have a husband, and, but the thing about this woman is, Number one, Jesus could have, you know, gone into Samaria to, you know, to talk to a man, to use a man, but he actually chose a woman. He, you know, he found a woman, a woman that had issues, that had baggages, but because he knew what he had, what she had on the inside of her to go and save or to go to be used to save an entire community. Yeah, this woman became, she became the voice for, you know, for repentance because she, you know, she went into her town and said, come meet a man that told me everything I ever did. And Bible says that the entire community, they were, they were all, they were all saved because of the woman's testimony. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, women have, you know, they have crucial roles in, in, in the work of the ministry, in the church, as pastors, as, as evangelists, as prophets, as apostles, as teachers, and, you know, in the fivefold ministry. And it's, they're not just reserved for men, they are also reserved for women. If we look at, you know, through the book of Acts, we'll see where women that were, you know, they were, they were, they were leaders in the homes um, during the times of the house churches. Yeah, God did not just, you know, create a man, you know, women to be sidelined. He created both male and female for the work of the ministry together. Wow. Amen. I hope somebody is getting encouraged and blessed out there. Uh, two points from there is uh, women can be anything. They mm -hmm. equal to the task. And Pastor Ben also said that uh, women are, is supposed to be a team with the husband. Mm -hmm. not inferior to the men so i hope you men are listening to that your wife is a team member a team player with you yes. <laughs> so thank you so much the next question is coming from uh it it eritrea i hope i'm saying your name right if not please pardon me that's a country um, eritrea eletrea eletrea Okay. Yeah. So I hope you're listening, or if you're not listening, pardon my pronounce pronouncing your name wrong. If I did, and um, her question, he, him, or her question, I don't know. He says, "If heaven is for real, why are many Christians afraid to die? <laughs> if that is where you're supposed to go." And the person gave an example. <laughs> That's funny too. The person gave an example how her husband just finished praying fire from the bathroom and i just all of a sudden went in and switched off the light and uh, light and scared him and he was so pissed at me because he was so scared so why are we scared to die <laughs> well, i think that's a funny one but that's it's it's, it's natural for mm -hmm. every, everyone to be scared to die Yes, we all want to go to heaven, mm. but it's just natural. That's just the flesh part of us. Um, so uh, I don't think there's anything wrong in being scared. You know, mm -hmm. it's it, you know, it's, uh, being afraid is actually mm. a form of defense. Otherwise, you just go into stuff. Yeah. And the, the truth of the matter is, uh, it's important for us to understand that uh, God will judge us if we die before our time by mm. taking stupid risks. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. See, I just learned something new. Really? Yeah. yeah, nobody wants 
everybody's afraid of dying. Even, you know, sometimes, you know, when I get sick and I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to die yet. I haven't fulfilled destiny. I haven't oh, finished wow. the task ahead of me. I, you know, I mean, but I, I, I'm praying that one day I get to the, you know, to where, to the place where Paul said, I have finished the race, you know, I have finished the course and now they lay before me a crown, right? You know, what, you know, you know if, we, if we can all get to that point whereby we are so ready, knowing that we have done the work, we have finished the task that we had on earth, then nobody will be afraid of to die. I believe sometimes we are afraid to die because we know that we haven't done anything. You know, we haven't, we haven't, let, you know, we haven't made our mark on the world. We haven't left a legacy. We haven't, we haven't done anything with the gifts and talents that God has given to us. And so, so that fear sometimes really freaks people out. They're like, ah, I don't want to die yet. You know, it's not my time. It's not my time. But when you know that you have served God and you've served people and you have given your all and that you know, you know that you know that you know that, yes, I have emptied myself, mm. don't be afraid to die. Wow. Okay. So I never knew that if we die before our time, we would be judged, taking stupid risks. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, Jesus wow. Christ, during his temptation, Jesus Christ, when he was tempted... The enemy said, oh, but you're a child of God. You're the son of God. Just jump down. And, and Jesus said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Uh, uh, I remember some years back, this was back in England, uh, some guy, they found out he was mentally ill, mm. jumped in a lion's den, jumped mm -hmm. in a lion's cage. <laughs> Since uh, the lion didn't eat Daniel and he's a child of God. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. That's, that's the highest level of foolish. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that brings me to the next question. Um, Helen. Helen said, I have been ministering to people. And one of the questions one, uh, one lady asked me one time said, how will God judge the unbelievers who does not know God? So um, I think it's important <clears throat> uh, to understand this everyone will have at least one chance to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm. Okay. Because it's the reason why Jesus hasn't come yet. And that was the next question. Why is God delaying his second coming? So that's yeah. perfect. Okay. Okay. So everyone will have a chance, Helen. So yeah. um, hasn't reached the whole world yet. Okay. So that's why that brings to the next question. And that answers the next question right there is from Joe. Joe said, why is Jesus delaying his second coming? Because everyone hasn't heard the word yet. If you know that there's still some remote places in the world that haven't heard the gospel. That's correct. And that's, that's why God is raising end time um, if, you know, ministers to go to the ends of the earth. Wow. Yeah. And we thank God, even that during this you know, pandemic with COVID-19, that the gospel is going further and deeper. Yes. To yes. places that we, we never thought it would reach. Absolutely. Just because of church without walls. Absolutely, yes. Just like right now, two Sundays ago, uh, when we had uh, Pastor Ezra was ministering, we had two people gave their life to Christ. The previous Sunday before that, Pastor Sam Oye was ministering. We have a lady from India gave yeah. her life and she contacted me so how would i ever been able to reach out to a woman in india i've never been to india mm. you know so this is wonderful well thank you so much for that answer the next question says uh which one should i pick there's so many questions he said uh before jesus came is from an anonymous person no name so mm. before jesus came and died where will the soul where was the souls of the people that died before where was their soul going well, there is a transitional place uh, okay. that they are. And I'm trying to uh, figure out the name again. But there's a transitional place uh, that they are, you know. Um, and the transitional place are for those who receive Jesus Christ. And there's one for those who don't. Okay. You know? So uh, there is a transitional place. But I think it's important, though, not to try and look for answers where you can't really get a full picture of okay. yeah, because uh, the Bible tells us that all the things that we need to know have been revealed mm. 
and, um, and in the uh, fullness of time, the things that we don't know, mm, we'll, we'll get to know. Mm, so mm. that will be my answer. But on, from a theological uh, point of base, they said there's a transitional place. Mm. Uh, but uh, I think that's not the, the thing that we need to be worrying about right now. Okay, we should worry about how to get to heaven. So to die without giving your soul to Christ, so that these kind of questions will not be rising up, <laughs> rising up. Yeah. Okay. So the other question is, my friend's dad is. Oh boy, should I be saying this here? My friend's dad is. Uh, uh, I won't read that question. I'm gonna. I'm sorry. I'm going to send that question directly to Pastor. But let me read the second part of the question because it's in the Bible. It says, "When you get wealth, carnally." and then give your life to Christ and start praying for God to keep that wealth. Is that a good thing for Christians? That means if you got your wealth through crooked way, and then after you start praying that God should, you give, you give your life to Christ after, then you start praying for God to protect that wealth for you. Is that a good thing for Christians to do? So you're, and the question is, if you got your, if you made your money, um, in a uh, in a bad way before you give your life to Christ, should you yes. see that God protect yes. the that you have? Yes. <laughs> um, I I really don't. Uh, you know, I'm not. Sh I I don't. I'm gonna have to answer that one. So I, I, I think uh, 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 maybe because I didn't I didn't read the whole question. I'm gonna send that to you. The There's question. more to the question. So, but mm -hmm. I. Well, I don't think I want to read that out Send here. Send it to us later. Okay, let's miss. Let's yeah. go to the next we'll, question. Yeah. So sorry, guys. We're, uh, we're going to miss that question, and we'll bring it uh, to the person later. And even the name too, I do. I wouldn't want to call here. So I'll take the next question, and it says, um, "When God said the right hand gives, left should not know, and left give, right should not know. How come people announce they are giving in the public, Christians?" That's culture. <laughs> that, that's just culture. But I think, uh, you know, uh, it depends. You see, I think most of the time we got to be very careful that we don't become too religious. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so easy to condemn people who announce. So, for example, if you're raising funds and you have a target, mm -hmm. say, say, let's say, for example, you have a target of about fifty thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars, and if somebody gives a certain amount. Uh, that and, and it's announced is just to see how far you are towards the target to encourage others to complete it yeah to encourage others to complete it i think sometimes uh, one of the things we've got to be very careful about is that yeah. people we judge people too much without understanding mm -hmm. the reason why things are it's the reason why jesus mm -hmm. says uh remove the log in your own eye yes before uh, you the speck in somebody else's eye yeah. uh, you will, you could usually tell when somebody is trying to do it braggadociously. Uh, mo in most cases, it's because they have a, a, a deadline or a, a target. Mm -hmm. And just to say, okay, somebody has given this amount. So uh, the only place where I have a problem is if you are raising up uh, funds and you're saying that you're going to pray specially for somebody who gives a, sp a certain amount, uh, that's where... I believe it could be a problem. Okay. Yeah, when it comes to giving, there's a lot of culture and traditions that has gone into it in the way that you know money is given and the ways that funds are being raised in the church. And when Bible says that, you know, you don't let your left hand know what you're doing, you know, when it, you know, you're tight, you're giving, it's really it's a worship to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that you should be making a public um, announcement. Oh, I'm giving 10,000 today. Yeah, and you know, I'm bragging about it. It's just like the person that, because he has so much wealth, he was given a special seat in front. Yeah, mm. and Bible says you're not supposed to play favoritism and show partiality. In the areas of giving, number one, it's a it's worship to God. Yeah. Bible says that Abel's offering was accepted, whereas Cain's offering was rejected. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we have to understand that when you know when, you know uh, giving is a form of worship and intimacy with God. Yeah, and it's not to be made into a public spectacle. Mm -hmm. 
You understand? And so when people are, you know, being very flamboyant about, oh, I'm, you know, I'm going to give 20,000 today, or somebody's saying, uh, you, know, you know, I need 10 people to give 5,000 or 10,000. Some of those things, we have to be careful because then we start putting the emphasis, oh my God, oh, that person has 10,000, that person has 5,000, and, you know, and it, it can cause division and all kinds of things mm -hmm. in, the, in the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You know, with other people too. Yeah, and it can bother people that don't have and make them feel uncomfortable. You see, when you want, if you want to raise a budget, fine. Tell people the budget. We have, we need to raise fifty thousand for this budget. Everybody's gonna, you know, we're giving out envelopes, whatever you can give that God lays upon your heart, which is what the Bible also says. Mm -hmm. Whatever God lays upon your heart to give, yeah, give it cheerfully. Mm. Yeah, not out of you know compulsion and out of you know out, out of force you know force that uh if you give you know if you you know all the you know everyone that wants to give ten thousand come to my right and those who want to give one hundred come to my left and then you now pray a special prayer for those that want to give it ten thousand and you just say God bless you to those that give a hundred in the in, you know before God the person that gave ten thousand and the person that gave one hundred stands equally before God wow okay absolutely bible says god you know bible talks about the woman the widow that gave her last might a last dollar yeah compared to the you know the one that was bragging about i tithe i give this i give this arms i give to this and give to that god honored the woman that gave the smallest amount mm. because it was out of worship praise god praise god wow okay so guys uh we are talking with pastor Ben and Pastor D Adekube, all the way from Calgary. If you're just joining, please help us share the video. They're sharing with us uh, general questions that came from audience like you. Uh, the next question is, when we were instructed in Christianity, the question is from James. I said, when as a Christian, we were instructed to pray in tongues only when there is an interpreter. How come everybody speaks in tongues on media and everywhere with no interpreter? Will that offend God? Um, absolutely not. I think uh, we need to, one of the things about uh, scripture and interpretation of scripture is uh, the word called context. And context is who said it to whom and what was the occasion? Wow, okay. And the reason that happened was the reason why he uh, came in and said, let there be an interpreter was the Corinthian church. I was reading a commentary by one of my favorite uh, theologians, a man called F.F. F. Bruce. Uh, and he said the Corinthian church was one of the most gifted church. But we need to understand it was a fellowship of sinners before it became a fellowship of saints. Ah. And so the problem with that Corinthian church, it was the same reason why he said some women need to keep quiet. Oh, okay. He wasn't saying that generally women had to be uh, quiet. But that particular church, the women were causing a lot of uh, uh, chaos in the church. And in this particular church, it was one of the most gifted churches. And there was so much confusion that there was no order. And if you read the whole of... Uh, when he was talking about praying uh, in tongues, which is First Corinthians chapter 14, when you read it, he at the end of it, he says, do not forbid the praying of the tongues. Yeah. Hmm. You know, the Bible also talks about when we're praying in tongues, we are actually communicating with God. It's a, you know, it's a heavenly language that the enemy does not understand. You know, mm -hmm. and that we should pray, all, we should always, you know, he talks in Jude, praying in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, so there is, you know, there is a place for praying in tongues to get you to the place of connection with God. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, but wait, but if you turn the entire service into praying in tongues and there's no interpretation and there's no order, there's there's no there is no um um, you know, um speaking in English or everything, everybody's just bagarakata all the time then of course you are going to segregate yourself from other people in the congregation. Mm -hmm. and if I will just add to that, actually, what he was talking about in that particular point mm -hmm. also as part of the context is if you are ministering to somebody, if you are yeah. prophesying, that's why it says if you prophesy, yeah. and if, you, if somebody's praying in tongues and nobody's going to interpret, interpret who, who are they prophesying to? Yes. So uh, it's more about the ministration of prophecy than yeah. 
praying in general. Okay. So I hope that uh, responds to your question there. Um, praying in tongues in the public, uh, according to the context of the Bible, was yeah. said because of the situation of that particular church as of that time. So it's not a general blanket statement that would go on until today. So when you read the Bible, be very careful how you interpret it. Thank you so much, Pastor D and Pastor Ben. Um, there, there are more questions, but I would take, uh, let's see this one, drum roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this one is important. I want to know also, and it's coming from Emmanuel Eche. Um, if the book of Isaiah 53 points to the future Messiah, Jesus Christ, why was it written in the past tense? I've always wondered that too when I read that passage. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Isaiah 53? Yeah, yeah I, everything I, about it is written in the past tense. Oh, absolutely. But the story is saying that we have a future Messiah which is going to come. Mm -hmm. So I personally wondered about that too. Great mm -hmm. question, uh, Etch. It's a very good question. Yeah. And now uh, it's written in the past. I think we need to understand. You see, our future as human beings was already in God's past. Ah, whoa. Whoa, Our future whoa. was already in God's past. You see, uh, as as gifted and as blessed and as uh, uh, talented as you are, Queen Abina, your few your your life did not begin when you were born. Mm. It began as we look in Jeremiah chapter one verse five. Before, it says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, Great. I knew you. Hallelujah! Wow. God. So, uh, and, and Jesus says something. He says, before Abraham, I, before Abraham was, I, I am. Ooh. You see, so what the, the prophet was doing there was, he was moved in the spirit and was trying to show the, uh, the, the sovereignty of God. Yes. Yes. The <laughs> sovereignty of God. And, uh, you know, uh, in today's world, Isaiah would have been called a false prophet because uh, everything he prophesied only happened after he died. <laughs> hmm. So that's one of the reasons why it would have been in, uh, there's more deeper issues, more theological uh, reasons for what was written in the past, but for a layman's point of view, that's where we're looking at it from. Okay, so if you want to know more, um, Emmanuel, there, I will, we'll, uh, towards the end, we're going to get information on how we can contact them at their church, and they'll be willing to, you know, walk you through, teach you, give you materials that will help you understand more. Some of these questions, you can't just understand it from a simple answer. You got to read more and study it for yourself, and then pastors will guide you to into understanding it further and the Holy Spirit to help you also. All right, thank you so much. Uh, let me take two more questions and then we would talk a little bit about your ministry because it's important where people for people to find resources. There was a fantastic uh, podcast you did, Pastor D, about um, uh, domestic violence. And I posted it on my wall yesterday. Actually, a lady called me this morning and I am going to send her phone number to you she wants to talk to you. So resources are super important. People need to know where they can find spiritual help, yes. uh, especially a good leader that will be able to lead them into salvation. That brings me to the next question. Can Christians lose their salvation? Absolutely not. So Absolutely. once you're saved, you're saved. Once you're saved, you are saved. What you can so here's the thing: there are two, there, there are two kind of uh, judgments. First of all, you're saved, and then also uh, you'll now be judged based on. Uh, it's called the white throne judgment. Is uh, is you're going to be based on the works that you did. Yeah. Um, um, but all are saved. And now the scripture for that: the Bible says the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. Yeah, uh, we need to understand that uh, 
salvation is not based on what we can do. Mm -mm. It's never, it's, there's no good, even your own good, what you think you're doing good is tainted with, with bad. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, he says, the heart of a man is highly deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Yes. The reason why Jesus came was because there was no way on earth we would be able to uh, attain salvation. So God had to do it by himself in the form of his son, Jesus Christ. Yes. So we need to understand that works will never get us into the presence of God. You know, one thing the Bible also says that, you know, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Whatever he has said, it, you know, it's, you know it's, it is a done deal. And, you know, and when it comes to our salvation, he died. He paid the price for everyone to be saved. Yeah. And, and and once we are saved, we are saved. Now you can now choose and say, Yo, you know what? I don't want to have salvation. You can reject it. God doesn't reject us saying that, oh, you screwed up today. That's it. You're no longer saved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can walk away from God. But the good thing about the God that we serve is when we turn back mm -hmm. and when we repent, his arms is always opened wide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like the prodigal son, the product, the dad did not abandon his son because he went because he decided to walk away from the family and just and take his inheritance and disappear and waste everything. Every day, the father was still watching out for his son to come back home. Yeah, because why? It was still his son. He still loved him. He still, that salvation is still there for him. So when the son came back, the dad didn't judge him and say, you're going to be born again all over again. He, the, you know, the son said, dad, I am sorry. And the dad embraced him and said, come, you know, you are welcome back home. Hmm. Yeah, you hmm. are welcome back home. God loves each and every one of us, and his plan is for us to have eternal life. And hmm. the blood of Jesus paid that price. It hmm. didn't just give you that price conditionally. It was unconditional okay. love, yeah. not based on your works. So, you know, so, you know, with the salvation that God offers you, it's there, whether you want it or not. Wow. Wow. So the only uh, thing that can stop you from uh, uh, salvation is you not receiving the it's gift. It's you walking away and saying, I do not I want, want you. It, but even when you say that, when you look at Judas, you know, Peter rejected, denied Jesus three times. But when he came back, what did Jesus do? You know, he was received. He was restored. And he was given back his ministry. Amen, amen. If Judas had repented, instead of hanging himself, he would still have been counted as part of the 12 disciples. Wow. All right. So you cannot lose your salvation, guys. It's only when you walk away from it. Um, thank you so much for that answer. Uh, I, I don't know which question to take out of this tree. I am going to just send, the, I mean, uh, read out the questions and if you can answer all of them, that's perfect. If not, just whichever one you answer. First one is from Marie Jones. And she said, David danced naked. First Samuel uh, 19, 24. Also, Saul prophesied naked. What does this mean? David did not dance naked as in naked. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not a it's a, these are important questions. I know. Yeah, but he was. So it's, not, it's not physically removing removed his clothes. Was he dancing naked? Maybe in the spirit realm, like his heart was just plain, clean, naked. Is no, that no, what it no. means? It was neither. Of, it was neither of those. Yeah. Uh, you see, in the Bible times, dignity was very important. Okay. Uh, it was. It's very, very important. Uh, when David, David basically, he wasn't, if, if you look at it, uh, his wife uh, was rebuking him, like, look yeah. at you, look at the way you're dressed, and see what happened to his wife. She never bore a child. Mm -hmm. mm. She yeah. never had a child. Yeah. So what David was, what the Bible was trying to make us understand was that David cast all dignity away. Yes. Uh. He, he, he wasn't trying to make a, he wasn't trying to be dignified. Yeah. 
He was just saying that I, I give my all to you. So he was dancing. You know when you have a great testimony? Yes. And I've seen people. Oh, they're they're rolling on the floor. Yeah. Yes. Ah. Yes, you're casting away dignity. Somebody will say, don't you know, look at you behaving like as if you, you know, you don't have sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. David wasn't, you know, when we talk, you know, um, when we talk about the word naked, it wasn't that he was physically naked. You know, uh, what you know, when, when we when we read it properly, he, you know, like like um, Pastor Ben says, he cast away his dignity and he became a humble human being before God, looking at how God had saved him and blessed him, and also he cast away his royal his royal robe. Yeah. yeah, he took off his uh, his um in he, he took off his kingship. Yeah, just like we you know when, when we have royalty, um, like we you know we're from England. Uh, if the queen was to dance naked, uh, she you know it would be it would be termed as that she took off her royal gown, uh, her royal crown, and she became a commoner. Okay, okay, that's what it means, and and that's what it is. You see, because David was looking about how far God took him from. You know, Saul wanted to kill him. Mm. He was with the Philistines. They almost killed him. Mm -hmm. He was in Ziklag. They plundered everything. The people who came with him wanted to stone him. Mm -hmm. You know, he looked at all of that and then to think. And he also looked at the fact that he was the youngest of eight children. Yes. And God still found him in the bush and anointed him king. So all of that. He I mean, David is obviously one of my favorite um, oh characters in the bible yes you know if you look at psalm 8 because mm. he meditated on the lord so much yes he says when i look at the moon the stars mm. he says what is man? man and he was oh. thinking about himself wow yes, yes he was thinking about himself that like, why would you honor me like this? yes why would yes. you do this yes. great for wow. me yes so yes. that's what it was and the same applied to saul saul was an ordinary guy yeah. in fact saul was what we would call somebody weird yeah, because he was the tallest in all his community, mm. you know, and people must have been teasing him as a young kid. Yeah, you know, and then he was the one chosen to be king over Israel. Mm. So those are the reasons why. All right, thank you so much. We have two more questions, but our time is past spent. One of the questions uh, says, uh, "What is the so what is the oracle of God, and how does that?" relate to the Ten Commandments? I'm going to text that question to you. And then the other question says, uh, does justification by faith abolish the law? So I'm going to text those two questions to you and the other long one before. But before I let you guys go, please, um, what message do you have for everybody watching? We usually give at least just a few seconds for anyone that wants to give their life to Christ. Then you follow it up with a message, and then you tell us how we can reach you. Then we would call it a day, sir. Okay, so here's the thing. I need us to understand something. Mm -hmm. The problem of the world is not bad leadership. Mm -hmm. The problem of society is not bad people. Mm -hmm. The main problem of society is the word sin. And when we look at sin, it is not about what you did wrong or what you did right. Mm. Sin is because we inherited it from Adam and Eve. And what did Adam and Eve do? They came out of the covering of the Lord and went into the covering of Satan. So if we look at it, uh, after God pronounced judgment on them, they still lived 900 and something years. Mm. You see what I'm saying? But the death he's talking about is a spiritual death mm. where we lose relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm. And so sin is not about what you did wrong. We inherited the ability to do wrong or right. Mm -hmm. Sin mm -hmm. is about coming out of the covering of God. Mm -hmm. And the only way to reconcile that is by receiving the gift. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. It, God was motivated by love when he gave his son, Jesus Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. And all it takes for us to wait to... to uh, uh, overcome that sin is to receive that gift in the person of Jesus Christ yeah. and all that entails is just realizing that you're a sinner and you needed a savior and that savior is Jesus Christ yeah. that he died on the third he, he died on the cross and rose up the third day that our sins may be forgiven and then you just ask him Lord come into my life be my Lord and my master yeah. and that is it yeah. mm. but the message I have for everybody today is that 
Uh, you are not an accident waiting to happen, yes. but a destiny, destiny being fulfilled. fulfilled. Amen. Amen. It's very important for us to understand. I don't care if you were born of a single parent. I don't care if you're an orphan. As long as you are born, God has a plan for you. Amen. And God does not make junk. Hmm. God does not make junk. So. And we need to understand that you are God's investment. Amen. And he wants Amen. to get a return on his investment. Amen. So Amen. it doesn't matter who hates you. It doesn't matter who doesn't like you. Hmm. He doesn't change the fact that God has a plan for you. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Amen. You know, and Bible says that the plans that God thinks towards you, they are of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. Everything that everything, the future that God has for every single one of his children upon the planet is a good one to give us all a good future. God's plan does not involve evil. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't have evil plans for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you, you know, so when you decide to give your life to Christ, when you become saved and born again, and you allow Jesus Christ to take ownership of your life, what you are basically saying is, I want to hand over control to the one that has a good plan for me, the one that has a future for me, the mm -hmm. one that the one that knows my end from my beginning, mm -hmm. and I know that the thoughts that He thinks towards me are of good, not of evil. Mm -hmm. And Bible says, No eye has seen. Now Neither has it and no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man. Yeah, what God has in store for you. Amen. So giving your life to Christ doesn't mean you become a boring, you know, just you know, not you know, you're you know, just a boring Christian and your life is just boring. That you are you you're you're saying yes to the most to a, a, a life that is going to be full, a life that is going to be powerful, a life that is going to be joyful, yeah. and a life that is going to be amazing. Yeah. God will take you places you've never seen, you've never heard, you've never dreamed of because yeah. you said yes to salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. So, guys, if um, anybody's out there and you want to give your life to Christ, you know, yes. just this very moment just say after the pastors just few simple words believe it in your heart and please text me and i would help you you know locate um wherever you are will locate mm -hmm. a bible teaching bible believing Absolutely. yes uh, we did that for the lady in india and she is doing very well right now so Amen. um the next few seconds here if you just want to give your your life yes Amen. Go ahead. Well, if you want to give your life to Christ, just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Yeah. I believe. I believe. That I am a sinner. That I am a sinner. And I need a savior. And I need a savior. I believe. I believe. You died on the cross. You died on the cross. And rose up the third day. And rose up the third day. That my sins may be forgiven. That my sins may be forgiven. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I ask you now. I ask you now. Come into my life. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my master. Be my Lord and my master. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For forgiving me all my sins. For forgiving me all my sins. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For accepting me as your child. For accepting me as your child. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor D and Pastor Ben. Please tell us how we can get to you. I know you have a podcast that is making waves all over the place now. And you also have a women's program. Your husband has a men mentorship thing going. Please tell our audience how they can follow you on social media, find your books and your podcast and everything. Well, you can um, get through. You can get in touch with us through our church, Calgary World Harvest Christian Center. We are based in Calgary, Alberta, here in Canada. And even if you just type our name on Google, I'm sure it will come up somewhere. And if you're interested in um, the media ministry that I run, the podcast, you can go on to allwoman.ca, allwoman, singular, A W. A L L W O M A N dot C A. And we have a women's conference coming up on uh, May 30th online via Zoom. It's called the Gathering of the Deborah's Company Conference. 
And it's going to be an, you know, a, an amazing time where God is raising up Deborah's to take their, their positions, even during this COVID, in the seven pillars of our society. And I am so excited that, you know, to be a part of that and to spearhead that and to raise up women like yourself, um, Queen Amina, in just taking, you know, in taking our place. Because God has need of us women. Amen. Amen. God has need of us in all of the seven areas of society. God has needs of us in the home. He has need of us in the education system, in the media, in the arts and entertainment, in in you know in um, in um in government and politics, and even in the church and ministry. Mm-hmm. And so, if you want to know more about our ministry and the podcast, um, the podcast, you can go on our website and connect with me through there. Yes. And it's also on YouTube also. And it's also on YouTube. Yes. Now, you know, the website will take you to our YouTube channel, All Woman Ministry, or on any social media platform, Facebook, you have Instagram, YouTube, you, Twitter, you can get hold of us there and connect with our podcast. The podcast is about real, being real and completely transparent. It's all about me sharing my stories about domestic violence, about families, all the things in my life, and just bringing it out there and and and, and just educating women and empowering them and, and you know encouraging them that if God can do it for me, He can do it for you, mm-hmm. and and everything is just real and complete. There is no there you know there's you know yeah I'm just plain. That is so humbling because I'm going to come up here. Today, a lot of um, a lot of people are not real. Mm. They don't share real stories. They, yeah. don't, they don't wear real hair, just like me wearing a wig right now. <laughs> you know, nothing is real out there anymore. So when people can really feel and hear and see truth, they connect with it. So thank you so, so very much for that wonderful uh, piece that at least I personally listened to. I am going to be sharing the link to your podcast on this broadcast. Um, Pastor Ben is doing an amazing job also with young men. Young men. I, he's raising up young men to become good husbands and good uh, fathers and good friends in the society, good leaders, good managers in in companies. So please connect with this uh, great uh, man and woman of God. And uh, that conference, Zoom uh, on Zoom, if you can send me that link. Just finished one with Pastor Bible Davis, and it was very, very powerful. So send it to me. I'm going to post it on each uh, video that I do. I am here daily. (laughs) <laughs> so I'm going to start promoting it and uh, just let people come on. So please give us your final word and then we'll call it a day for today. Well, I would just like to say uh, right now we're all on lockdown. It doesn't mean that your destiny is on lockdown. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is the time for you to dream. Amen. This is the time for you not to just dream, just mm-hmm. dream big. Because the solution is big. Mm. Now, there's a problem happening somewhere that you are the solution to. Mm. Every person is a walking solution to a problem. So rise and shine for the glory of the Lord is upon you. Yes. I say a big, big, I'm so impressed with Queen Amina. We are so impressed with what you're doing. And uh, I just want to say, uh, we, we we congratulate you and we celebrate you. Thank you so and much. The person that I celebrate the most is your husband. That's yes, what, that's yes. <laughs> My king, I call him. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for joining us today. I know your time is fast spent also. Mama D, I cannot thank you enough. Mm-hmm. You are always silently supporting me. And you know, I tell people something. I I want you to really see my face. This is from my heart. I tell people, I said, the current under the water is the strongest. Mm -hmm. It's not the waves on top. You know, the people that are silently praying for you, they want nothing but for you to succeed. You fall into that category, and I thank you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord enlarge your course. Your generations yet unborn who see nothing but peace. Amen. In your life, in the name of Jesus. Thank you guys so very much. It was wonderful spending all this time with you. And I hope you come up again anytime you're doing anything. Let me know. Um, I, I want to take you up on domestic violence section. It's a big deal. 
14 people have been murdered during this lockdown yes. at home. You know, in UK alone, I didn't even look into Canada and other part of the world. It is wow. crazy. Yeah, I'm personally dealing with about two women right now that I'm helping to, you know, get out of it. So it's huge. It's out there. Mm -hmm. So I would take you up on any time that you have time to talk yes. more about it. All right. Thank you guys so very much. Have a wonderful rest of your day and happy Mother's Day again. Thank happy you. Mother's Mother's Day. Day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for your patience. We started pretty late. Um, we're just goofing around, praising Mother, praising God, and brought some people from the beginning. Um, Pastor D and Pastor Ben, they're amazing, amazing people. They've been, uh, I've known them for many, many years, and um, it was wonderful listening to the wisdom that they shared with us. So one of the things I'm going to leave you guys with is women. If you're a woman out there, you were not just created for nothing. God has a purpose for you, like Pastor Ben said. If you are on earth, there is a purpose for you. So find that purpose and live according to your purpose. And if you don't know what your purpose are, pray. The Holy Spirit will lead you. He will guide you. He will show you. He's the one that shows everybody everything. So don't think that you are worthless. You are something, you mean something to God. And God is going to help you get to your purpose and your destiny. Another profound thing that the pastor shared was because it's a lockdown season doesn't mean your destiny should be locked down. Dream. And he said, don't just dream, dream big. Dream big that you can't afford not to reach it. If your dream is not big enough, then it's not good enough. If your dream is too small for just you to be able to do it, then God, you don't need God, but we all need God to succeed in life. So dream big, work on your dreams. And the other thing, the last thing that was uh, very profound for me was saying that women, as a woman, you are a team player with your husband. Don't ever think that you are worthless. Don't think that you are nothing. Don't think like you're less than your husband. You are not less than your husband. You're there to be a team player. You support him, he supports you. So I hope you guys took uh, something valuable from this broadcast today. Until tomorrow, I will see you 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, same place, same time. And see you tomorrow. Just keep watching the Queen Amina show. Don't go away. Keep watching the Queen Amina show. Thank you guys for watching. Take care. Bye.